Hello guys, it's Cairo. So today's video will be relatively short, but we're going to be discussing mesh geometry as well as n-gons, what they are, why they're horrible for your models, and how to fix them. So every 3D asset that you see in a video game on Twitter or in your favorite movie is made up of two types of polygons. They're either made up of quads, which are right here. These are four vertices or triangles, which are three. Quads are what's most common, but both are in theory completely fine to work with. One triangle can make two quads and so on and so forth. But if a face is made with five or more vertices, it is called an n-gon. N-gons are not good for any type of modeling, but with Roblox in specific, they're even worse. So when a mesh is imported into Roblox, it is completely triangulated, which means that all of the quads on the mesh are turned into triangles. If there are n-gons on your mesh, then there's a big risk of triangulation being wonky or messed up in those areas just because there's no clear spot of where to split that face in half. The problems can become even worse when you're doing animation or using mesh deformation. There's no real way to spot n-gons on a model except for looking for them yourself, and the easiest way to fix them is to press K to access the knife tool, and then you would just want to make manual cuts yourself. So we would make a cut here to turn that into a triangle, and then we could put one here as well, and then we could just make another cut, oops, and then we could just make another cut right here. So that's three triangles and two quads, and now nothing is as wonky and things will bend as they should. You see that if I undo these cuts and I go to bring this edge up, you can see there is a lot of problems. A face should just not move like that by itself without an edge there. So depending on what you want to do, you would have to make different cuts. So say you could put a cut here, then this could just be a quad, and then this would be able to bend on its own, and then you would still need a cut right here, and then this vertice can move freely. So it all depends on what you need. Uh, you can make as many cuts as you want, like if I want to cut there, I could put one. If I want to cut here, I go put one. The biggest problem that I think that I see is that people will tend to use n-gons on their meshes just to keep the vertices as low as possible. But there are ways that if you want this to be completely flat and you don't need the vertices to really be in any specific spot and you don't want to add any vertices, let me just undo this. Then what you can just do is you can go to face like mode and you can press on this and you can press control T. And this will just triangulate the mesh in the best way possible and it won't give you really much control over where these edges are but it won't add any extra vertices so this is maya but just as an example you can see that i triangulate the eyes here since the eyes are completely flat i didn't really have to make any quads or make the eyes protrude because you know they just sit flat so they really just need to make sure that this whole eye isn't one big and gone so moving on to the actual geometry or topology of your models, it is super, super important if you are creating concepts for UGC or even creating UGC items just because of the pretty low limits that you have to hold yourself to when you're making your meshes. So currently that limit is 1200 vertices and 4000 triangles and if you want to see what the uh, current poly count of your model is, you can click up here and make sure that you have the statistics box checked. And what that will do is it will bring up this window right here and you will be able to see the vertice count of whatever you're doing. So if you're in object mode, um, you can see the total count of everything in the viewport. If you go into edit mode, then you will just see whatever you have selected. So since this is everything, it'll still be the same. But you can see that if I only wanna see the poly count on this one plane, I can just select it and then it'll say 7 vertices out of 17, which is everything. So when you're modeling, you really want to be mindful of modifiers like subdivision surface and stuff like that that add a really good amount of geometry, uh, as well as bevels. Those tend to add some geometry as well. So you want to be careful of how many increments you're adding to your bevels and stuff like that. 
In a later video, I'll kind of go more in depth about what you can do to keep your topology down while not tarnishing a whole lot of quality. But until then, if you have any questions about Engons, I know they can be quite confusing. Leave something down in the comments and thank you guys for watching. See you next time.